the chemical equation shows the relation between the reactant and the product that the reactants means the substance which combined we call reactant and the result as a result the substance which is formed we call that as a product so a chemical equation we can represent a chemical equation as a word equation which is the most easy thing to do we can write the chemical equation as a symbolic equation and we can write a chemical equation as ionic equation so the word equation actually we just simply write the name of the substances which react and then the substance which is formed symbolic equation we use a actual symbol for each element or a compound which is used as a reactant or formed as a product and in ionic equation what we do we simply write the changes which happen for the ions so in this part we will discuss each of them so starting with the word equation then we'll move to symbolic and then the ionic and when we are writing a symbolic and ionic equation there is another thing what we can do we can add a state symbol what is a state symbol a state symbol means like if a substance is solid we write small subscript s if a substance is liquid we write l if a substance is gas we write g if a substance is dissolved in water so we write aqueous or aq so state symbols are added for the symbolic equation state symbols are added for ionic equation but we don't write any state symbol for word equation so word equation we simply mention that what is the uh, well what are the reactants and what is the product formed so we'll but the we'll compare both like writing a word equation at the same time we'll try to write the symbolic equation so first part and then at the last we'll discuss ionic equation so the first part is writing a word and symbolic equation so writing a word and symbolic equation the first category when elements will react with each other so if i say i have calcium plus oxygen what will be the product when calcium react with oxygen calcium plus oxygen the product will be calcium oxide calcium oxide so the product is calcium oxide and this is a complete word equation now we want to write a this is a word equation for this reaction now we want to write a symbolic equation symbolic equation we use a simple remember when you are writing a symbolic equation for element if the substance is element you have to check whether the element is a metal or a non metal if the element is a metal you will write the symbol as an atom but if a element is a non metal you will write as a molecule except group 4 and group 8 and for if a substance is a compound how to write you will use the valency to write a formula so first we we'll try to identify what what are the substances calcium is an element or a compound calcium element yeah and element. yeah element and what element is this metal or a non metal 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 oxygen element or a compound element element and what what kind of element is this metal or a non metal non metal non metal 
and it form a calcium oxide because a combination of two or more elements it's called a compound so this is a compound so now what is the symbol for calcium you will use a periodic table calcium is ca but we don't write ca2 why we don't write ca2 because calcium is an is a element which is a metal and for metal we just write them as atoms so for calcium we write ca plus oxygen symbol is o but because oxygen is a non metal so for a non metal what we do we write them as a molecule so for oxygen we'll write c uh, for oxygen we'll write o2 so for calcium it is only ca but whereas oxygen it is o2 because oxygen is a element which is a non metal and it form calcium oxide so because calcium oxide is a compound so you have to remember recall how we write the formula of a compound so we we just first write the symbol of the elements so calcium is c oxygen is o some student make a mistake like when they are writing a formula they write oxygen as o2 that is wrong why because we have to first write a symbol you first write a symbol for calcium and oxygen so calcium is plus 2 oxygen minus 2 their valencies and the symbol for calcium is ca and oxygen is o then we simplify the valency and cross multiply so formula of calcium oxide is ca o this is the first part but for a symbolic equation it must be balanced as well so we completed the first part the first part is writing a correct reactant and the product the symbol should be correct because if the first part is wrong the second part is the balancing which will always be wrong if the first is wrong because you cannot balance a equation in which you have a wrong formula of the compound so calcium plus oxygen give calcium oxide now the second part is a balancing for balancing the equation we start with oxygen followed by hydrogen and then we'll do the other elements that will follow a rule for balancing start with oxygen followed by hydrogen if it is there and then the other element how many oxygen do you see on the left hand side and when we are balancing we can only put the number before the element or a compound not as a subscript so how many oxygen do you see on your left hand side two two so how many oxygen i i see on the right hand side one one so which number i should write here to make it balanced so i should write two here because this two will be multiplied with oxygen and this two will be multiplied with calcium so it means we have oxygen is balanced one side left side oxygen two right side oxygen two what about calcium we have two calcium on the right hand side and we have one calcium on the left hand side so what we do we put two here so the calcium is also balanced so this equation is balanced in terms of calcium in terms of oxygen from both left and right hand side is it uh, clear the balancing part yes okay good now the second part is the state symbols the state symbol means how these substances exist at room temperature calcium is a metal so what you expect a metal state common state of the metals most of the metals are solid at room temperature so i'll write a subscript in a bracket s that is solid oxygen oxygen is a non metal most of the non metals are gas and few only one is there is a liquid which is bromine so oxygen is gas and calcium oxide if a compound contain one metal and one non metal means it will be an ionic compound and ionic compounds are always solid at room temperature so what is the state of this substance it will be solid so the state symbol we identify from the nature of the substance if an element is a metal likely solid element is a non metal likely gas if a compound is ionic likely it will be solid is it uh, clear the word and the Can symbol yes can we write state symbols in front of the symbol for the element or compound yes you can write here as well in front okay. you mean before means as a coefficient you mean here no the front okay here you mean this part yes oh yes you can write 
So when we are writing a word equation, so here the first thing is when an element is reacting with another element, so we complete a word equation in this manner. And this, using a word equation, we can write a symbolic equation. This is when element react with another element. What if element react with a compound? The second example. Throughout the course, we'll do different types of examples related to equations, different kind of equations. So uh, you will have a practice. This is just an introduction of the topic. When element react with compound. For these type of questions, these type of equation, you have to check which element is this. If element is a metal, it will displace the first part of the compound. If element is non-metal, it will displace the second part of the compound. So it depends on the element which is reacting. Like example, this is a very important statement. If element is a metal, it will displace the first part of a compound. And if element is reacting with a compound, and if the element is a non-metal, it will displace the second part of the compound. Example, if I say I have calcium plus copper oxide. Yes, yeah, state symbols are always relative to the room temperature. That's true. So calcium plus copper oxide. What is calcium? Calcium is an element. And what is copper oxide? Copper oxide is a compound. So which element is this? Calcium is a metal. So which part it will displace? The first part of the compound or the second? The first. The first. So it means that calcium will displace or knock out copper. So as a result, it will form calcium oxide plus copper. So because calcium is a metal, so metal will displace the first part or displace the first part, uh, name of the compound. But what if the element is a non-metal? Like example, if I say chlorine plus potassium bromide. So chlorine plus potassium bromide, when you check uh, the nature, chlorine is an element, potassium bromide, is a compound and chlorine belongs to group seven, so it will be a non-metal. So this is the first part of a compound, this is the second part. So which part the chlorine will displace? The it's a non-metal, so it will displace a second part of a compound. As a result, what will happen? It will produce potassium chloride plus Bromine. Is it uh, clear the two examples related to reaction between the element and the compound? Any doubt in this? No. Okay. Now writing this, the this is a word equation. Now how to write a symbolic equation? If I want to write a symbolic equation. So calcium is an element, this is a compound, this is a compound, because name of a com uh, compound we write by using a valency there formula, and for element we write according to whether what is the nature. Calcium, how I should write, Ca or Ca2? If element is there, either it will be atom or molecule. Ca or Ca2, what I should write? Ca. Ca. 
because it's a metal, so for metal we only write Ca. Copper two oxide because the valency of a copper is two. So then we have to work out this uh, the formula of copper two oxide. Copper is plus two, and oxygen belongs to group six, so minus two. So we simplify the valency and cross multiply. The copper oxide is Cu. Oh. So this is a copper oxide. Then it gives, gives calcium oxide. So calcium is also group two plus two and oxygen is minus two. When we simplify, the calcium oxide will be CaO. And then copper, a metal is formed, element as a metal. So it will be Cu only. So this is a, the first one was a word equation and the second one is a symbolic equation. Is it clear? Uh, this example, how I write, the symbolic equation is already balanced. That's why I don't have to balance this equation. Sometimes equations are balanced when you write the correct symbols. But not always. Some questions, when you write the correct symbols, you will find that the equation is also balanced. The second example, when a chlorine is reacting with potassium uh, bromide, gives potassium chloride and bromine. So chlorine is an element, potassium bromide is a compound, potassium chloride is also a compound and bromine is again an element. And chlorine is an element and so symbol is Cl, but this element is a non-metal. So for non-metal, we write Cl2. Potassium bromide. Potassium bromide is a compound. So how to write a chemical formula of a compound? So you have to work out according to the valencies, potassium is a group one where bromine is group seven. So potassium is group one, so it will be plus one and bromine is group seven, so minus one. So we simplify, valencies are already simplified. So when we cross multiply the formula for potassium bromide will be KBR. Bromine is group seven, so valency is minus one and potassium is group one. So valency is plus one. So formula for potassium bromide, it will be KBR. So chlorine plus potassium bromide gives potassium chloride a compound. So potassium is plus one and chlorine is minus one. So when we cross multiply, so it will be KCl. Plus bromine, it's a non-metal element, so it will be a molecule. So this is the symbolic equation for Chlorine reacting with potassium bromide gives potassium chloride plus bromine. But this equation is not balanced. We have to balance. For balancing, we start with oxygen followed by hydrogen and then other element. But in this equation, we don't have oxygen or hydrogen. So we can start with any element. Like you can see two chlorine on the left-hand side and one chlorine on the right-hand side. So we put two. Chlorine is balanced. We have two bromine on the right-hand side, so we should have two bromine on the left-hand side. That is also balanced. And for potassium, there are two potassium on the left-hand side and two potassium on the right-hand side, so that is also balanced. So this equation is balanced in terms of all the elements. Is it uh, clear how we convert the word equation into a symbolic equation? Any doubt till this point? Okay, good. So today we did how to write a chemical, how to write empirical formula, then molecular formula, and we discuss the chemical equation, word equation, and symbolic equation. Ionic equation we will do after reaching chapter eight, because in chapter eight, you will write, learn how to write an ionic equation. So there I will teach you how to write an ionic equation. So today only uh, we have discussed the word and the symbolic equation. And time to time, because you will find the common equations are there, you will use in your course. So time to time, you will practice as well related to this chemical equation. Any question or a doubt related to the class? Okay, so 
I'll end the session and share this recording with you.